Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Sue and Noel Radford just can't stop having babies. Oh, hello, gorgeous. The mum of Britain's biggest family has been pregnant for most of her adult life. You could say we are addicted to having children, yeah. Over the last three years, cameras have followed the Radford ranks swell to 16 kids. I love mummy and daddy! I love mummy and daddy! Oh, number 17. Now, Britain's biggest family are determined to get even bigger. Go, quick, quick. What is there not to love? Surrounded by kids and laughter and just fun every day. Yeah, we love it. But this time, having another baby doesn't prove to be easy. We're just absolutely destroyed. I'm struggling to cope with it. And as the Radfords prepare for another new arrival, the older children are starting to fly the nest. We know what you're going to do brilliantly. <laughs> and have families of their own. Say hello, Nana. The day when they've all gone, it's going to be really strange. <laughs> Stop it. Sue and Noel's obsession with babies will give them the most testing year of their lives. I just totally wasn't expecting that. Come on, time to get up. Luke, you getting up? Come on. It's 7 a.m. in the sleepy town of Morecambe on the Lancashire coast. Mum of Britain's biggest family, the daily battle begins. In this extraordinary household, just getting the troops ready for school each morning is a military operation. Right, everyone, come in the living room a minute. Today, Sue and Noel have a surprise announcement to make. Or so they think. I know. I think I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I think I know. <laughs> I think she might have another baby. Sue and Noel Radford have produced a baby nearly every year for over a decade. Every time it's just a secret, it's either a holiday or a baby. It's every time, so it's obvious. Hello, Casper. Casper's got something to say, haven't you? You're going to show everybody. Come on, let's have a look. Say so you have to read my shirt. I'm going to be a big brother. Oh, what does that mean? What does that mean? Mum's having a baby. Woo! Baby! We knew it. Yeah. This one will be number 17. Oh, God, that's not something you say every day, is it? <laughs> Mum, is here for you or a girl? don't know yet. In recent years, Sue has fallen pregnant shortly after giving birth. But despite the couple's compulsion to have more kids, there's been no announcement of a new baby for 18 months. So many people have been saying, you know, baby, 17 on the way yet. It's been, no, this has been very anticipated that this news would be coming. Where's it from? I think we are. I think we're all addicted to babies, yeah. That's mummy's tummy. We just love having them around us all the time and, you know, the house is noisy, laughing, crying, screaming, and we thrive on it. They're going to stop when mum turns 40. Well, they've said that they will anyway. I mean, they said they'd only have three, didn't they? And we'll see if that happens. <laughs> the Radford's brood may still be growing. See you later. Bye. Bye. But the older children are now starting to cut the apron strings. Look, it's your boulder bear. Eldest daughter Sophie has moved out, if only to a house round the corner with her boyfriend and daughter Daisy. If she could, she would keep us all at home, because she, that's just what she's like. She loves having all, all of us around. I don't think she'll ever stop having babies, really. One goes, you'll have another one coming back in. It's like, I've gone, there's another one coming. <laughs> Sophie goes home to see her mum most days. But Sue's second eldest daughter, Chloe, 
is about to move 300 miles away to study at Plymouth University. I can't believe you're going to uni and leaving us. I know, what if we be able to see, like, the scans <sighs> and stuff? We'll Skype it. Yeah, we'll you. Skype it, and you'll be like... Chloe will be the first Radford child to properly fly the nest. You're not allowed to do assignments in your holiday, so you have to come home. Oh, OK. <laughs> That's an order. <laughs> When Sophie moved out, it wasn't that much different because she's coming back every day, but with Chloe, it's be quite hard because we'll never... We won't see her that much. We'll only see her once or twice a year, she said to me. Oh, I'm emotional. I'm going to hate it. I think if I keep myself busy, it'll be fine. Obviously, I'll miss you, but I'm not going to be like, oh, I want to go. We well, will be busy. You'll be busy Skyping your mummy. <laughs> <laughs> As the oldest girl living at home, Chloe assumed responsibilities beyond her years. Oh, don't hit her with that. That's going to hurt. Being from a big family, I think I sort of have had to grow up quicker. I've got to, like, look after the little ones sometimes, and obviously you've got to be mature and responsible for that. She's a good sister. She kept on bathing us. She washed up. She did everything. When Chloe leaves, her younger sister, 12-year-old Millie, will become head girl. So you're going to have to do everything I have to do. No. You're going to have to hoover. You're going to have to tidy the no. room. You're going to have to tidy your own room. You're going to have to babysit sometimes. No, 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 listen. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, no, 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 yeah. And you're going to have to help after children. You will have to help. I'll Especially help. now Mum's Stop it! pregnant. My plan is, so if my mum says, clean the pots, I'll, I'll clean the pots, but I'll leave a mess and then she'll be like, you're not doing that job again. And then I'll walk off like... <laughs> for Dad Noel, it remains business as usual, working at the family bakery to provide for the Radford household. It's not going to be any cheaper once Chloe's gone. I think it'll be more expensive. We'll be having to put money in a bank account, especially when all the books and things are all needed, and on train fares home and what have you. Thank you. Chloe's chosen degree, early child development. People are usually like, why would you... I, I would have thought being in a big family would have put you off working with kids, but no, hasn't. Can't wait. We've got 16 children. It's quite hard work, helping with homework and coursework and things like that. I guess it's a bit of an achievement for Sue and I to finally have a child going to uni. <laughs> Chloe's departure will mean one less mouth to feed. Please don't stand on it. But with a small army of hungry kids still at home, balancing the weekly food budget remains a challenge. Ugh, we go through loads of food in this house. The Radfords try to limit their groceries bill to £200 a week. We're only allowed two or three biscuits. Not two or three, only two or one. Two or three. Two or one. <laughs> The bread and the milk run out after a day or two. As for the rest, three or four days, the potatoes might do me the week. You're hiding behind the potatoes. I can see you. In just one day, the Radfords get through 16 pints of milk, 18 yoghurts, two bumper boxes of cereal and three loaves of bread. We don't encourage them to go and help themselves, but... They will. Mum and Dad don't see us. Cos you always sneak and we're always quiet. Come on. No. If I get caught, I'd be Biscuits, crisps are the things that disappear with the, with the mice during the night. Who said you could have that? They'll then move on to the fridge. Anything that they can put their hands on, they'll have off with. <laughs> well, who's giving you that? Was it Millie? They'll go in the kitchen and say, oh, chocolate spread's all gone. I wonder who took that. Who did it, Tilly? They'll never know, because there's so many. <laughs> Come on, you lot, hurry up. It's a half an hour, that's it. Tomorrow, Sue and Noel will see daughter Chloe leave home for university. Go and get some socks out of the drawer. Go on. To mark the occasion, They've gathered the whole family together for a farewell meal. It's 
always really difficult to get everybody dressed and out of the door for a certain time because you probably have one going, I don't want to wear that and I don't want to wear this. And it's like, oh. I'm not wearing jeans. Well, what do you want to wear? The Radfords only dine out once or twice a year. Tonight represents a rare treat. Right, quiet! Shh! <laughs> Shh! Right, we're off out, as you know, to this restaurant. Are you listening? Then you have a banging hangover. Yes! Yeah. We don't go out, you know, as all of us like this. If we do, it'll be on holiday or something. It's it's quite an expense. Set meal for two. Is that what you want? OK. <laughs> it's not just the expense that puts off the Radfords from dining out. Dad! Josh, Sit down now. Sit up. Stop it. This is what you said you wanted. No, sit. Yeah. Knew that, Dad. Don't give him any more. He hasn't eaten that yet. We love you. I'm gonna miss you. We know what you're gonna do brilliantly. <laughs> and all the best. <laughs> One, two, three. Thank you. Really? Yeah, it's been hard work. So I think we'll eat up, pay the bill, then scarf her. Bye, Hamster. The longest Sue and Noel have been apart from any of their kids was for a two week holiday. But Chloe won't return home for another three months. It's going to be weird. She's such a long way away. You know, we can't just get in a car and be an hour. I'm going to miss her loads. Yeah. I can't wait to see her again. Oh, it's going to be ages, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. This has come round too quick, hasn't it? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to suffer more. Just take a little bit to get used to it. No, I'm sorry, you come in. <laughs> Look after yourself. I will do. All right. See ya. You think they will leave home eventually. And that's what you bring them up to be able to go out into the big wide world on their own, but it's hard. Let him go. The day when they've all gone, it's going to be really strange. Sue can at least look forward to the arrival of baby number 17. Britain's biggest family, the Radfords, are expecting yet another baby. And their ranks will soon swell to 17 children. In their 10-bedroom Morecambe home, it's a case of one in, one out. But the family still find a way to be together. I've moved into your room, Colin. <laughs> have you? I thought you would have. 18-year-old Chloe is settling into student life in Plymouth. <laughs> what are your flatmates like, Chloe? I've only met two of them yet so far, but the posh. Oh, and uh, I sound common, <laughs> but they're all right, yeah. Have you got food? <laughs> yeah, I've got a tin pie. <laughs> you know how to live it up, don't you, Chloe? <laughs> Have you, are you missing all of us? I am missing all of you. Are you missing me? Yes. yes we're all missing you. <laughs> Blow a kiss. Bye. The next day, Sue and Noel have just returned from a routine 12-week baby scan. No, it's not your fault. It's nobody's fault. No. It just... It just happens, doesn't it? Hmm? I just totally wasn't expecting that. No. We went along to that scan, thinking that everything was fine. Still feeling sick, still feeling rough. And um, we got in and she put the gel on my tummy. And I was looking at the screen, I thought, oh, wow, baby's got a lot bigger. And then for those couple of seconds, it took me to register that I couldn't see a heartbeat there and my heart just sunk. Mm. And then I think then we, I just 
realised then that it, it was gone. She said that the heartbeat stopped two days ago. We've had two miscarriages in the past. Not got as far as months, this, but they, No. One in five pregnancies ends like Sue's in the first three months. For the Radfords, it's no less of a shock. It doesn't matter how many kids you've got, you know. If you've got one or 16, it still, it still hurts and it affects you. You know, I'm, I'm upset that we could have had a new brother or sister and my mum and dad have, my mum's lost it, so. Quite upset, really. With 16 children still demanding attention, life has to go on. Because we're constantly busy and you're not sat there dwelling on it, I think it's made it that bit easier, hasn't mm. it? But still difficult. It's know. not been nice, has it? I mean, there's been times where you just... You've had to come sit up here on your own, haven't you? And if you're upset. We've got 16 children, 16 amazing children that are healthy, happy, and you have to just get on with it. <laughs> you just put them out for them. What's your fingers? 11-year-old Katie. Katie, no. Katie, no. And 12-year-old Millie are doing what they can to help. Put your hand in it, yeah? I was going to tip it in. You're going to eat it. I don't know why you're hurting at it. I feel really sorry for the butchers. Chloe used to help me quite a bit with the cooking. She always um, enjoyed helping me within the kitchen, so, so she's gone. So Millie and Katie uh, stepped up to it and they sort of helped me out quite a bit, really. We're helping, but it's getting a bit dangerous because Katie's got a knife. I've got a knife on the same chopping board, which isn't really a good idea. Being the oldest girl is very weird because you've got a lot of responsibilities. You have to do jobs. You have to help clean babies, get them dressed, do whatever my wife's supposed to do. Me and Luke were the same year, and he doesn't have to do anything. Even though Chloe is left home, there's still a small army of hungry mouths to feed. Some fussy ones, whatever you need, you don't like that. So it's just tough, you know. I'm not, it's not a hotel, I'm not starting to cook different meals for everybody. They've just had to grow up liking what we make. Isn't it nice and quiet without Chloe? <laughs> I'm sure she'll look the same, yeah. That, but yeah, it is actually. Without Chloe in the house, it's quite different. She sort of made them all louder, <laughs> I suppose, because she kept talking and she just made everyone laugh. Been quite hard without her. I do miss Chloe. I wish she'd come back. <laughs> the Radfords are gearing up for their biggest family celebration of the year. You're going to put it on here? I get really excited when it's Christmas time. It's just the magic of it and having a big family that's multiplied by so many, it's just amazing. But when you've 16 children, Christmas comes at a price. Christmas is, you know, it is an expensive time of the year, so through the year, we put a little bit of money aside each week. It's not enough to cover the whole of the cost for Christmas, but it just helps when it comes to buying all the presents. <gasps> they're all going to write the Christmas list out, and then Buddy the Elf's going to take it to Santa. Why don't you get some mushy things? Because you like mushies, don't you? We don't get them as much as we'd like to. We sort of know what the budget is, you know, and the, the Argos book comes out and the calculator and they start adding it up to see, oh, well, I'll, I'll put this back and I'll be able to get that instead. How much are mushroom monsters? We'll usually spend about £200 on the older ones and then on their main present and then little bits and pieces and then 50 to £100 on the younger ones. What you writing? I'm writing bag of money. <laughs> That's never going to happen. Some of the younger ones, they've no idea, have they, about money? They're just writing anything down. Hoping Santa might bring it, I guess. A supersized Radford Christmas costs about £3,000. If there's something that we can't afford, then they don't get it and they're quite happy with that. 
we won't ever get into debt for Christmas and we don't. It's not worth it. Four more minutes. <laughs> Four more minutes. <laughs> There's one thing that is free, though. Chloe's home for Christmas. Can't wait. Just can't wait to squeeze it. Not far already. <laughs> <laughs> Here she is. Oh, that was a long day. Oh, oh. Missed you. Although Chloe's only been gone ten weeks. <gasps> See you. It's by far the longest Sue and Noel have ever been apart from any of their kids. <laughs> oh, I can hear the excitement. <laughs> so can I. <laughs> So quiet at uni. Being back here is so weird. Like it's so loud compared to uh, Plymouth, but I love it. Hello. 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 Oh, she's back. I feel very happy. We're excited to see her, and we've got three weeks with her now. So much catching up with her and having a nice time with her. Welcome home, home. Oh. <laughs> so good to have her back. I feel like we're a complete family now that Chloe's back and that it's just going to be the best Christmas ever. Sue and Noel started buying gifts for the entire family three months ago. The couple have spent every evening for the last two weeks wrapping over 300 presents. <gasps> All to be delivered, of course, by Santa. These reindeers fly to houses to give us presents. He would take some elves with him and then they can probably drop them off. And he puts all the presents in order. So they put one pile there, one pile there, and then one pile there. More cars! We get 16 times more fun. More fun. Than uh, what? You know, just having one. Yeah. But it's probably more than 16 times. It's, because, it multiplies yeah, more and more because yeah. there's that much excitement between them all. For this extended family, Christmas dinner comes supersized. We have got a turkey crown, £20, a couple of swedes, a couple of bags of carrots, five kilo of spuds, a couple of gallon of gravy, 60 pigs in blankets, 48 Yorkshire puds. I guess a normal size family, they'll think, blimey, you know, that's a lot of stuff to get through, but uh, it's just normal to us. It's a Sunday dinner with sprouts. Oh, are you coming? Are you hungry? With Sophie's boyfriend and daughter Daisy making up the numbers, there are 20 mouths to feed. We've got a bit of a production line going on here. Chloe's doing some, Sue's doing some, I'm doing some. So far, it's not quite chaos. It's borderline. <laughs> we can almost all squeeze on the table, but just not quite. <laughs> Have I got anywhere left to sit? Right, everyone. Happy Christmas, everyone. Enjoy your meal and let's have a fantastic rest of the day, everybody. This is the first Christmas in over a decade that Sue hasn't been either pregnant or holding a newborn baby. To be able to see all of the children having such a brilliant day is just amazing, mm. isn't it? Moments like this have made us think, oh, yeah, we'd love more children because it's just priceless, it's magical, it's just really special. We're very lucky. You don't want it to stop, yeah. you just want it to carry on and carry on and, you know, enjoy being around kids. With no new baby on the way, Britain's biggest family are going on holiday instead. No tilling. The Radfords have decided to take their supersized brood to the Loire Valley in France. Ah! Noel has been behind the wheel for several hours. Stop clicking them loomy bags ah! I hope they're completely stone deaf, this couple. For the Radfords, an affordable family holiday involves a minibus, 
and a tent. A lot of people will not camp with even two kids, so, you know, I think we might be a little bit crazy to do it with all of us, but definitely more relaxing than at home. Right, don't pull it. We'll let us push it through. No, I don't know what's going on here. The oldest kids have stayed in the UK. No, you need one for this middle bit here, look. look. Oh, Casper! Casper! But Sue and Noel still have to cope with nine school children and three toddlers. He's got a lethal weapon in his hands. Hurry up, cos I don't like it in here on my own. Lift it up, Sue. Which bit? The tent. I need some air. <laughs> the campsite's very peaceful. Oh, no, it's cutting! Millie, you need to split up. But not when we're here. You probably scared a lot of people off. You've you let need go. To the... It does, not The two kids are supposed to be holding the elf have let go. <laughs> right, we're done. Fifteen seconds. Teamwork. When your budget holiday means squeezing 12 bodies into an eight-man tent, conflict is inevitable. No! There's only three boys in one room this four, so we're having the big room. You can have a small room. Yes, we got the big one! Okay. Oh. Me, James and Luke have got the, the second biggest room. Mum and Dad have got, like, one of the smallest rooms. Hang on. Did you just say me and Mum have got the little room? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't got the little room. Thank you. Did you have? They're fighting Mom over bedrooms again. The usual argument is at who's sleeping where and who's having what bed. Daniel, my giant inflatable bed won't fit in the small room. No matter what we do, where we go, every single time. Sorry. You can't have got in there, Daniel. Don't be stupid. We're not having a small room. I moan and moan about it, argue for hours on end, and then they'll just swap anyway. Bed swapping anyway. They never, ever stay in their own no. beds, do they, ever? We've got the massive room in! Hey, if you keep that off, you're getting thrown out. Look at it. Ew. <laughs> this isn't supposed to happen, is it? No. Oh. I think we've driven 650 miles. It's tipping it down here, and I've just looked, and it's nice and sunny back at home. This is typical. And there's 14 of us in this tent, 12 kids, me and Sue. It's going to be a bit of a nightmare, I think, today. The kids are going to get bored, grumpy. I might just go and sit in the van on my own for the day. There goes the morning coffee. Who needs the toilet, then? Me! You might just have to have a spoonful of coffee, Sue, instead. Right, go. Go on, Max, quick, quick. Come on, Tilly, run. Come on, quick, quick. Quick. Stop it. Don't fight him. Two hours later, and Sue and Noel have a tent full of fractious children. Stop it. Do you want to go back to bed today or shoved outside? <laughs> go, quick, quick. They decide to get away, but it won't be an expensive outing. It's all right if you've only got a family of four, but, I mean, when you've got so many, it really does add up. We looked just at a zoo, didn't we? Yeah. And it was, was it 290? £292 just to go to the zoo. We won't be doing that. Instead, Sue and Noel opt for a trip to the local supermarket. That way. This way. But doing the weekly food shop with an enormous brood in tow... Can we get back? ..is not something for the faint-hearted. No, we're not getting those. Can we get one? These lot are just looking at skipping ropes, toys, sweets and bikinis. It's a nightmare. They're all... No. Everything is just growing in the trolley. Can we have, can we have? And you can't think what you actually damn well need. Can we get some hot chocolate? No. I'm no way. No, don't speak, Millie. Out. Get out. You're not having anything. Out. Go on. Keep going. I am coming without the children next time. I need some fresh air, quick. Somebody get hold of Oscar. Get hold of Oscar. Right, who wants cat? Sue and Noel remain desperate to have another baby. 
But up to now, there's been nothing to celebrate. Oh, Max and Mark, I don't think it's enough yet. It's 10 months since Sue's miscarriage. But finally, there is news of a baby in the Radford house. I love bumps. I miss my man, Daisy. The Radford's eldest daughter, Sophie, is expecting her second child. <gasps> Look at this one. And she's not the only one. Look at them two bumps. I know. Oh. <laughs> hey, <you're strong. laughs> At 39 years old, Sue is also expecting a baby, her 17th. Do you feel like yours has got bigger because it's number two? Um... Quicker? Because I sort of feel like you show more the more that you have, I think. I think this one is, has actually grown a bit but I think faster it has, than Daisy. I think it's right, isn't it? Oh, I don't just love rubbing a bump. <laughs> After last time, you know, we're losing the one back in September. Uh, I did think then, well, you know, would Casper have been our last? But she's pregnant again, which is great. So, yeah. So it's not our last one, thankfully. You never know. This one might not be either. Do you know, like, when you're, like, really, really <laughs> heavily pregnant and you can, like, pick yeah. your bump up and, like, wobble, wobble it? it. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I love that, when it gets, like, massive. Yeah. We're going to be, like, beached whales. Yeah. It's not the first time mum and daughter have been pregnant together. Aww. Two years ago, they gave birth to Casper and Daisy within a month of each other. Oh, Blair, she's smiling. <gasps> Whoa, it's going to be another Casper and Daisy. I know, I can't wait. We're actually <gasps> oh, going to have another double two. Double troubles. We will. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. I know. Fun. After the heartache that we had in September, <laughs> been through a lot to get this baby, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Um and it feels special, doesn't it? Yeah, very. Go high five. High five. For dedicated mum Sue, there's also another reason to celebrate. Chloe now has decided that, you know, she didn't like Plymouth and, um, and just how much she loves the big family and our family and that she missed us so much that she's come back. <laughs> so she's back home. Which is nice. Chloe has managed to transfer her degree course to a local university. I just think it would be easier all round to like just be here instead of so far away. Because obviously, if anything was to happen to anyone in my family, I'd be so far away that I wouldn't be able to like help out or anything. I think I'd rather be closer to home. When I found out my mum was pregnant, I was happy but kind of nervous at the same time. Obviously, miscarriages are upsetting. But I, th I do think at a certain point, my mum has to start thinking of herself because obviously her body's not going to be able to take it forever. But as long as everything's healthy and my mum's healthy as well, I'm happy for her. Right, night night. Night, night night. Just leave her. No, Today, Sue has a 15-week baby scan and is taking the kids along for a first look at their new sibling. Right, so hands up, girl. Right, hands up, okay. boy. So um, oh, look at her, Daisy. Oh, okay. Well, it'll definitely be one or the other, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, look. Although the baby appears perfectly healthy, 39-year-old Sue's pregnancy is still categorised as high risk. She is at an increased risk of having a miscarriage because her body's been pregnant so many times. You know, there are always things that can go wrong all the way through the pregnancy, to be honest with you. There's our little bottom. And just here is a willy. Hello, baby boy. That is Hello, baby boy. Should be a girl, there's too many boys in this house. No, it should be a boy. In fact, that equals ten boys. Well, I know that. Baby! 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 I'm really happy about baby number 17. I'm looking forward to it, another boy. Look at his little nose. I've always said that when I get to 40, then that'll be it, we'll not have any more. So I think this, this one, this will be the last one, won't it? I'm certainly not thinking of it as this is our last. Um, no. Oh, is 
Sue is now 21 weeks pregnant. This is a quiet time of day. There's just three of them at home. Now, once the kids go to school at like half eight, yeah, the noise level's reduced, but then Casper sort of sometimes makes up for the noise levels. <laughs> oh, you're hungry. Come on then, come get your toast, Tilly. I used to enjoy pregnancy. I wouldn't say I'm enjoying this one, really, cos it's... the miscarriages that we've had has just taken away all that, um, You know, being able to just relax and enjoy it. I just feel more anxious this time than what I have with any of them. I do have a lot of days where I think, oh, I'm just absolutely crazy to be doing this again, you know, with, with what we've been through and everything, and the stress of, of wondering if everything's going to be OK and everything. Just can't wait till it's over. We've probably got about 18 weeks left, and um, those 18 weeks can't come quick enough, really, till he's here, and then I can stop sort of being so anxious and worried. But, yeah, I'm just trying to not show how anxious I am in front of the kid. Just trying to sort of enjoy it with Sophie as well, but it feels different this time. Boy, girl. I can still see my feet, that's amazing. I can't, see I can't feet. see my feet. <laughs> <laughs> He's fast asleep. So she's been lazy this morning. I only had a couple of kicks this morning. No, she's always active. I just get it right in the stomach. Do you? I don't like being pregnant. I don't know why you do it to yourself. No. I don't know why you do it. I really don't. <laughs> you bizarre. Mm. We assume. Mm hmm. We'll never be forgotten, I'll say. Will you? will never be forgotten. No. In Morecambe, the parents of Britain's biggest family have been dealt a devastating blow. Saturday, um, all day, he hadn't really moved much at all, so... Uh, so we rung the hospital, we went in. Um, I think we were quite confident on the way there, thinking that he'll be fine. And we, we just got there and she just put her little machine on. She thought she'd found him at first, but she wasn't 100% sure, so she got the doctor in and the scanning machine and, and that it just showed that he'd gone. He'd died sometime that day on Saturday. <laughs> Sue was 22 weeks pregnant. Losing a baby this late is not common. I think just at the moment we're just absolutely destroyed, aren't we? Just, mm. and we, I'm struggling to cope with it. You go to sleep at night thinking of him, and then the, as soon as you wake up in the morning, he's just there again. I know people say that you find a way of just dealing with it, but the pain just never goes away, I can see that. Cos this... I don't think this pain will ever go. I was sat in my room and so... Oh, for God's sake. Oh. Sophie came in and she was just like... Mm. Uh, Mum's lost Alfie. I had to go through labour and give birth to him, which, you know, that's hard going through that knowing that you're not going to get to take your baby home. We did name him and called him Alfie Thomas. <laughs> and he was perfect. Just see so much of Casper in him. Tiny little features, little hands, feet. You know, as soon as we're told that <sighs> she's pregnant again, you love them unconditionally because they're a part of your family, whether they're here or not. 
me, we will always have 17 children, you know, and that won't change. At the moment, I know I just couldn't even think about putting myself through this again, putting our family through this again. For me, I sort of have to draw a line under that now and just, I don't think there'll be any more. The Radfords are doing their best to get on with day-to-day -day life. Even though what's happened with Alfie uh, dying and things, we still we haven't time to sit around and uh, grieve like we would like to. I guess we've just with all the children and work and everything, it's just so busy. We just have to get on, and which in a way is is quite a, quite a good thing because you're not sat there constantly thinking about it. None of the children have asked anything, really. Some of the older ones are, are putting on a, a brave face just for me and Sue, just to try and make it a bit easier for us. One, two... Back home, family life goes on. Sue and Noel's eldest daughter, Sophie, is expecting a baby girl in five weeks' time. It's a very strange situation to be in, you know. I'm looking forward to being a nana again. I'm looking forward to, you know, Sophie having the baby, but also I think it's going to be sad. After the summer break, it's back to school for the Radfords. Mom, Mom, it's got the school start! Daniel, just go up on there and get Luke up for me, will you? This morning, Sue and Noel have 11 children to get to school on time. Oh, no. I put the wrong name on it. I've put Ellie on Josh's bag. Oh, Dad! From now on, you call Ellie when you're at school. No, I'm not. Are you excited? Ow! Yeah. It's four-year-old Tilly's first day at school. Look at you. All grown up. It's such a strange feeling seeing them in their uniforms for the first time, you know. You know, she's suddenly not a little baby. She's a big girl. She's all grown up. It just feels strange. It really does, because, you know, they don't seem old enough. <sighs> they grow too quick. Don't you, Tilly? You're going to have fun today. Hey? You're going to see Max at school as well. Yeah. Hey. Okay. You got your pee bag, haven't you? Already? I think our mum's gonna be a bit sad saying bye to Tilly. <laughs> right, Tilly, come here, let's have a picture. Are you ready, Tilly? You're gonna smile. Smile. See you later. Yeah. See you later. Bye, Mum. Bye, see you later. Yeah. See you later. You have got socks on, haven't you, Max? Yeah, OK. First day back to school and we're late. It's five past nine and we're still a couple of minutes away. We always say there's two times a day. There's a real time, then there's Radford time. Come on, quick, quick. Right, go. Come on, quick. I'll carry it, you'll trip on it. Go on, James, you can go. During school hours, only two-year-old Casper and three-year-old Oscar are now at home with Sue. Oscar could actually go to nursery if we wanted to, but I just don't think she'll, um, she could cope being at home just with little Casper. She's mother hen and she likes them round her all the time. When all of them finally go to school and she doesn't have any more, then that'll be extremely upsetting for her, having no one at home. It'd be quite weird for her if there's a complete silent house with no kids in it. Good boy, come on, down the steps.
Say, I love April. I love you, Apple. <laughs> Sophie has given birth to a baby girl. And Sue was by her daughter's side when her granddaughter was born. Say hello, Nana. There's something very special about getting to see a grandchild mm -hmm. come into the world. I think we'll always have that special little bond, won't we? Mm hey? -hmm. Eh? She's an absolute little princess, aren't you? No, it's it's lovely. She's brought so much happiness, haven't you? Hey. Since she's arrived, it's made it dealing with Alfie a bit easier, I think, actually. Are you looking? It's just sort of a bit of a comfort, you know, that we can cuddle her as we're not going to be able to cuddle him. I don't know. She's, it's possible she can sleep in this house. It's that noisy. Don't stick her at home. Leave her alone. She's trying to sleep. The last year has been really, really hard on us as a family. You know, we've had so many sad, really sad times. So it's been, it's been really tough. You know, it's probably been the worst year of our lives, to be honest. But um, things may be starting to look a bit brighter and a bit better. When's the smiley's coming? I sort of think, yeah. would I put myself through it again? Or would I not put myself through it again? I think. There's a part of me that wouldn't, that doesn't want to. You know, would it be too much? But, you know, I'm just going to just take it and see what happens, really.